Hi, uh, this is Possibilities. I'm Cecil Walker, and uh, I'm a therapist. Um, I'm Adam Froer, and I'm also a therapist, and I also do psychological research. Uh, so today we're talking about how to create change in an unchangeable situation. Well, first, what even is the change someone might be looking for when they're faced with a situation that feels like this is really tough and this isn't changing? Yeah, so I think I, I think about our work as psychotherapists, and I think most often when people come in to see us, to talk to us, in essence, what they're looking for is change of some kind. They want They want right. something to be different. And I think oftentimes people feel like there's barriers to change, right? Either the situation itself is unchangeable, mm -hmm. or maybe they don't have the motivation to change, um, or maybe they feel like um, change is too scary. Um, and so I feel like oftentimes people come kind of in a catch-22 of saying, I want something to be different, mm -hmm. but I'm nervous about creating that change. Um, and so I think one of the things that we should start with is in some sense, what, what is change? How do, when people come looking for change, what are they looking for? What, what do you make of that? Well, I think what people sometimes think they're looking for uh, when they come to us is how do I change the situation that I'm in? Um, this situation is mm -hmm. causing me to feel uh, whatever it is that I feel depressed, anxious, worried, uh, fearful, um, uncomfortable in these circumstances. And they come, I think, seeking, how do I change this situation that I'm in? How do I mm -hmm. enact something on my environment? Um, and as you were just describing, that's not always the change that I uh, am, am trying to grab, grab a glimpse of, of what they, their potential is, the change that they could be seeking in the conversations that we're having. Um, I think that there's a there's a distinction there and that over time they start to see uh, more often than not that it's not that the environment needs to change after all. It's not that, you know, whatever is making them depressed needs to ease up so that they could be happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you I think you made a really important point. And I think um, in in a lot of instances when people come, they're in a situation that might actually be unchangeable, mm -hmm. right? They, um, you know, if they have a physical disability, right. that's not going to go away potentially, right? If they if they've had a traumatic experience in their past, we can't do anything about changing that that has happened. And so I think that begs the question: if if the environment or the situation can't change, what change are we actually there to create? And I think what I would say is um, we're we, we should probably say that we work from a solution-focused brief therapy mm -hmm. perspective. And so from that perspective, one of the things that we're trying to achieve in that work is helping people, in essence, to start interacting with the environment or with the situation differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the change that we're oriented at is if, if you were able to now do something different, mm -hmm. if you were able to see the situation different, mm -hmm. if you were able to make meaning of this situation differently, um, if you were able to interact with um, the triggers of mm -hmm. the situation differently, that would impact you. That would then also have ripple effects. Yeah. Um, and so I think one of the first things I would say about change is that even our perception might need to shift from the environment doesn't need to change but the way that I interact with the environment perhaps is what needs to change. Yeah, yeah. I think if that change that you're talking about happens, it almost doesn't matter what environment that they're finding themselves in. Mm -hmm. If they go through whatever transformation or change that um, is, is powerful enough and necessary uh, so that they feel like they are happier or more comfortable with their circumstances, then it no longer feels like, uh, you know, they need something about their environment to, to, to look different or that the people around them need to start responding to them differently. Um, I, like you said, I, I like that, that picture of, of ripples happens. Um, and, and I think it also depicts uh, what is so useful about these conversations in the first place. 
because like you said, uh, we're not miracle workers. We can't change anything about what's going on in their lives. Yet people still show up to therapy. People still come to talk to us in these circumstances where they're they're dealing with a, a specifically uh, difficult kind of situation, um, and they walk away feeling like something is different and something is better, um, even though we're not actively changing something about their lives. I, uh, for a short while, saw this woman who was experiencing uh, chronic pain, and um, she was in so much pain and so much discomfort. Um, that she had gotten to be actually suicidal. Like she didn't want to even, mm. uh, be uh, experiencing any of this anymore because of how uncomfortable she was um, and how because of how much joy it took away from her life, all the things she used to be able to do. She was in so much pain, she couldn't do those things anymore. Specifically, uh, she couldn't care for her family and her grandchildren. She couldn't, uh, she loved to cook and she couldn't make meals and, and things like that anymore because she couldn't stand a- in front of an oven. She couldn't do all the like intricate things you needed to do to prep food uh, because she was in so much full body pain all the time. Um, but after our conversations, uh, not only was uh, she no longer struggling with, you know, feeling like she didn't even want to be here anymore. Um, I-, I obviously couldn't do anything about her physical pain. Um, but she came back and told me she was, uh, something had changed. Something was different. Mm. And, and now she was looking at the circumstances that she was in, in just a different enough way that she realized, uh, she could still do the same things that she loved, but she had to do them differently. And so, um, Mm. at at the time, uh, a big family gathering was coming up. They were all going to come, um, over to her home and she wanted to be able to prepare them a meal. And so in, preparation for that she slid her living room chair into her kitchen um and uh it, it, she would cook and sit down for like long periods of time and so she would stand and prep things and cook over the stove for as long as she could and then she would sit um whenever she felt like her stamina mm-hmm. had depleted or or she felt like she just needed a break um and uh, nothing about her actual physical pain her uh, medical condition none of those things had actually changed but she said that she was she was finding that joy back again. She was finding she was being able to enjoy her life in the ways that she did. She she felt like she could care for her family and she could be that person that she wanted to be. Um, even though uh, obviously our conversations, I, I couldn't do anything physically for her. Yeah, I think that's I think that's such a powerful example, and I think that's one of the reasons that we started this this episode really about change, right? And in a series called possibilities, right? There, I think one of the things that, that happens as people begin to just experiment even, right? Is that um, there's a lot of research out there that says when you, when you feel good, when you have positive emotion, then, then all of a sudden your creativity expands, right? Your, your ability to think of other possibilities Mm -hmm. gets bigger. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I can't imagine coming into this kind of therapy, right? Where you're looking for strengths, you're looking for resources, mm-hmm. you're looking for resiliency and that not stirring up some kind of positive emotion. And then she gets to leave the session kind of feeling that possibility and then thinks all of a sudden of, you know, if I, if I did one thing differently, if I just pushed my chair into this room, then I could take breaks periodically. Mm-hmm. So something that wasn't a possibility before Mm -hmm. all of a sudden became a possibility, which then is so remarkable because what happens then is it kind of leads to this upward spiral of now that I've experienced the, I can actually do this thing that I love, then the positive emotion continues to increase. And now Mm -hmm. I feel more joy and more happiness. And I get to watch my family eat this meal that I prepared for them. And then more possibilities, right? So then she gets to start thinking, okay, so if I could do this, what else could I do? What else, if I, if I just adapted one thing, what other possibilities are out there? And I think as we think about change, one of the things that I think is important to talk about is that change is happening all the time, right? In science, you have the law of entropy that says we're continually devolving, right? But you also have evolution happening simultaneously, right? Things are yeah. progressive, progressing simultaneously. Change is happening all around us. So really what we're talking about is like harnessing meaningful change, yeah. making, it, making it purposeful, making it pointed, 
Um, and that is such a beautiful example of if you, if you move your chair, now you're interacting with the world in an entirely different mm -hmm. place. Now things that didn't seem possible do seem possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, I think that's really powerful. Yeah. It, it, I, I like how you framed it that, you know, this, uh, just the idea of the possibilities that she, she might've been in touch with now led to this kind of a change. Um, and it's, it's, really remarkable because she was telling me when you when we first met that all she could do all day long was sit in that chair in mm -hmm. her living room this is her the entirety of her day um most of the time she didn't even want to like watch the movies and tv shows that she usually enjoyed she was just in such a depressed funk that all she would do is sit in this chair um and then like you said with the spark of possibilities just being in contact with the idea that more is possible uh she did what she did. She took that same chair that was kind of a prison for her and mm. moved it to, to allow it to um, give her access to the joys that she used to have before. Um, I, I think this is getting us into exactly what people watching this might be interested in hearing is how to do that. Mm -hmm. How do you get that meaningful change? How do you grab that and, and, and find purpose in uh, some of the change that, that might actually make a really meaningful difference for you? Um, part of what it sounded like you're proposing was that even just having a conversation about the possibilities mm -hmm. um, seems to ignite some of that. Um, but, but how would you answer that, that question for people? How do you, do I even begin to, to go get this meaningful change? Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think one of the things that I would say when people come in to us for therapy, the very first question that we usually ask people is what are your best hopes? Mm -hmm. Right which is a weird, bizarre question. But in essence, what we're getting at is if, if you walked out of here and you all of a sudden could be hopeful, mm -hmm. uh, what, what would you hope in some sense? What would you hope to be hoping? Mm -hmm. um, and I think just entertaining an end result. Um, I think one of the really powerful words we use, which is just a really mundane word really is difference, mm -hmm. right? If, or even instead, right? If you weren't feeling what you're feeling now, what would you like to feel instead? Mm -hmm. And I think entertaining that possibility of, I could feel something different. Mm -hmm. I could feel something instead of this. Um, so I think starting at the end mm -hmm. is one really important component. And then I think one of the, then the next thing is, um, and this is gonna sound kind of stupid is to not dismiss it, mm -hmm. right? To be like, but that can't be. Just follow it through for a minute, right? right? Pay attention to, as you, as you envision that instead, what feeling kind of stirs up in there? And then just like we were using at your client as an example of like, let that feeling grow, that positive emotion grow. So if I, if I wasn't feeling depressed anymore, I would feel joy from being able to feed my family, mm -hmm. right? So entertain that, walk it through, envision it, think about it, let it grow. Um, and I think that in and of itself is a really good starting place. I think one other thing that could be really, really useful is to then try to stretch it, mm -hmm. right? Um, say, okay, if, if that happened, what, what difference would that make to me? And I think this gets back to what we were talking about a little bit before of like, make the difference meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what would it mean if I could actually have that difference? And again, just let it sit and stretch it and don't dismiss it. Yeah. Um, dwell in what difference would that make? Um, I think that, I think those two things are a really good place to start. Once people are are doing that, they they find this endpoint. Um, they they come sit in and 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 walk around in uh, uh, what that could look like and what that could mean for them, and even attach uh, some meaning about what difference that that makes to them. Um, how do you see that as 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 uh, a jumping point to? where they're, they're trying to get, they're trying to see, mm. people are saying, I, I just want to be happy. I like, like this woman, I just want the joy that I had before when I was feeding my mm -hmm. family and taking care of my family. Um, once they're doing these things that you're describing, how does that get them to, to where they're trying to go? 
Yeah, I know. I think that's a really, really good question. And I think my, my answer to that is what a lot of the research says, right? Inside psychotherapy and outside of psychotherapy is that the more we can envision, mm -hmm. the more detailed we can, we can see where we want to be, um, the more likely we are to live as though that has happened, right? In some sense, our brain, sometimes they call it like a, a dry run or a dress mm -hmm. rehearsal, right? Um, or cognitive practice, right? Um, musicians will do this. Mm -hmm. They'll run through a piece in their head over and over, even if they're not sitting at their instrument, right? Uh, athletes will do this uh, when they're, they are preparing for a big game, like the run plays in their heads, right? They just do this cognitive practice. One of the things that we know is that the brain can't really distinguish, is that actually happening? Mm -hmm. Or are you just imagining it happening? Mm -hmm. So in some sense, I would say where we put our focus, our abilities, or in this case, possibilities increase, right? So we then start living our lives as though the end result has actually already happened. Mm -hmm. We start seeing life that way. We start experiencing life as meaningful. We start, it, it turns into what we call oftentimes in athletics or whatever, muscle memory, mm -hmm. right? It's like we've lived this life before. So how does, how do we move from where we are to where we want to be? It, a lot of it comes down to mental practicing. Mm -hmm. I, I, th I think you're absolutely right. Um, that, that in having these kinds of conversations, it, it starts to turn into a mental rehearsal. And, um, what we also tend to do in these conversations is ask them to notice, uh, the, the presence of these things, mm -hmm. the presence of this, this outcome that they described, yeah. um, the presence of the joy that they're seeking. Um, and I'd love to hear you uh, talk a bit about uh, what difference turning on that noticing even makes, being able to notice or catch when uh, the thing they're looking for starts to surface. Yeah, I think it kind of goes back to the beginning part where I said, um, in some sense, that expanding of possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. If I if I start noticing, if I think about, if I process, even if I articulate, if some people are writers, right? If I write down in great detail what this end result will mm -hmm. look like, right? The more details I can get, the, the better. Mm -hmm. Because then, like you say, as I just live my normal everyday life, I'll start to see glimmers that things, parts are already happening, yeah. right? Because one of the things that we know is that we can't, we can't want something that we haven't had a taste of before. Mm -hmm. So going back to your client, she can't know that she wants joy from feeding her family unless she's had that before, right? Um, and so we, we miss what we've had. Right. And so I think in order to write down what we want, in essence, we're simultaneously thinking about writing down, articulating mm -hmm. what we've already had. Mm -hmm. And if we've already had it, pieces of it still have to be present. Mm -hmm. And so I think what happens then is that not only do we have this muscle memory that we start living life as though it's happened, but we start in some sense remembering, mm -hmm. look, that's still there. That was a piece of what I had before. And then again, that upward spiral of, I'm so glad to see that there. I feel excited that it's part of, it's still here, mm -hmm. right? That upward spiral of positive emotion begins to happen again. Um, and so in some sense, just, just the act of envisioning, the, the act of detailing, it's really a one way for us to remember that these are actually still possibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of this, after going through this process, reconstructs the, the existence of this possibility for them mm -hmm. and puts it very much uh, within arm's length for people. Um, would you say that after going through that process, I, I, um, I identify where it is I'm trying to go. What's the thing I'm trying to even be hopeful for. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I get some type of detail on, on what difference that makes. Why is that meaningful to me? And what does that even look like? How would I notice when that starts to pop back up? Um, or if it already is even popping up, how yeah. would I notice the pieces that are already here? Uh, once someone goes through that process, would you say after that process they've changed that that's meaningful change? I would say, I mean, yes, but I would also say 
doing all of those things is change, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when they walk into the room, they are, they're saying, I feel stuck. Mm -hmm. And in some sense, they're saying, I'm not thinking about the end result. Mm -hmm. So if they start thinking about it, that's change. If they start doing that mental rehearsal or they start writing down right. in great detail, that's different. That's change. That's so all of those pieces, once I start noticing what's always been in my mind or what's always been in my presence, but outside of my awareness, mm -hmm. then now that difference in noticing that's change. I'm noticing different things. Mm -hmm. So each one of those things is change, but it's not change in the circumstance. Again, going back to where we started, it's right. not, it's not that the circumstance is changing. It's that I'm changing the way I interact. Mm -hmm. It's the way my perception is changing. But then I think your question is a really profound question because in essence, it's like all of these seemingly small mundane changes do then result in a more meaningful change, right? Because now I put all of this together. If I can see these things, mm -hmm. if I can feel that I'm moving towards where I want to be, then it means something about me. It changes the person that I am, it changes. I'm no longer a depressed person who sits in a chair all day, but I'm a, I'm a joyful person who can feed her family. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is really meaningful change, um, to change in essence, our identity. I can't think of anything more meaningful than that, Yeah. but it can come from just an accumulation of small mundane changes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you described that really, really well um, over, you know, all of the different scenarios that I've seen and all the conversations that I've had with people. I, I think that's what I see most often is um, it, it feels like a change in themselves, I think, is, is part of it, um, a change, a change in uh the the character that they're placing in these scenarios. But then I also think it's a change in their relationship with themselves, too. Mm. It's a change in how are they identifying and describing that that character? Um, you know, it's very different than following a, a villain through, you know, what might mm -hmm. be uh, a narrative that will end in their downfall versus uh, a hero, someone they're, they're cheering for, someone they know is very powerful and, and has um, quite remarkable strengths that will be um, um, the thing that kind of guides them through what could be a difficult journey, but it mm -hmm. nonetheless ends in a, in a really positive and powerful place. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I think that encapsulates uh, the, the change that ends up happening, even though they might have walked in going, you know, I just uh, I, I wish someone could take the pain away. I wish someone could uh, give me a million dollars so that I could, I could I could have that much more ease in this situation, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, I one of the things that I really like about what you're saying is and it goes back to why we chose to title this what we did right is creating change mm -hmm. in an unchangeable situation all this change is something that we have power to create mm -hmm. right um i can i can think about where i want to be i can i can detail what would be different i can i can outline mm -hmm. in as much clarity as i possibly can um what would be different when that change is present? I can, I can experience change in my emotion. Um, I can, I have the power to create all of that. Um, and then that change that I created then leads to really meaningful change in how I perceive who I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I feel like this is a fantastic starting place um, for someone who maybe is in a really difficult position or um, someone who is just seeking to understand how to handle, like you said, mm -hmm. how, how to find change, create change in a situation that feels like it's, it's very unchangeable. Um, I don't know, I, I didn't think about how, how do we end this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that that's it for yeah. today, right? I think yeah. we'll we'll come back and we'll talk about other possibilities mm -hmm. um, in in episodes to come. Yeah, absolutely.